kind of a nice little place. Hey, look, there's a little uh, hummingbird nest, it looks like. Ah, no, that's not a hummingbird nest. That's a different kind of bird. bird. Hummingbirds make their nest out of their like, saliva. No, it's like dust. It's just so small and light. <sighs> so in this video, I just kind of wanted to um, walk around and show what it's like to, uh, to snowshoe on the coolies in winter. Because it really gives a new dynamic on the coolies. It makes it an entirely different environment to move on. The simple mobility, the um, type of ecosystem, honestly. The animals you'll find, the way you'll find them. Uh, the plants and what you see, don't see, and how they react to the winter. Uh, I thought that, that would be a cool thing to share with all of you guys. And give a little insight on uh, what I like to do for the winter since uh, building and stuff tends to get restricted because um, it's cold and you can't have your hands out and it's hard to grip the ice and snow on the ground, everything wet because I like the heat, not the snow, so in winter this is what I like to do a lot and uh, I had a lot of fun making this, so I hope you guys enjoy it. With a fresh blanket of thick snow, now is the perfect time for snowshoeing. My favorite part is walking on unscathed snow. It has a very satisfying and accomplishing feel of it. One of the unique parts of a winter environment is that tracking becomes much easier for everything from megafauna to birds. While walking, I found plenty of mammal burrows, all of which I believe to be voles, along with the foot tracks indicating where they were walking on the surface. In this particular burrow system, there were three orifices in the snow. The footprints indicated the mammal exited the highest altitude hole, went down vertically down the hill to the next hole, then entered the northernmost burrow entrance to the left. While I proceeded to dig, you could clearly see a circular tunnel running through the snow. I followed this for longer than I expected before I lost it in some shrub growth or the alternative. Oh my god, it must have gone somewhere down here, which I have completely destroyed. I did this for three burrows and all resulted the same. If you want to go find one of these for yourself, consider the snow environment. All of the burrows I found were in soft fluffy snow with stiffer vegetation buried inside. If the snow is smooth and soft enough, you might even find the footprints as well.
After a strenuous climb up a coulee face, I eventually succeeded in ascending an ice cliff face. While on this ice sheet, I discovered two very different things. The first being that this was not in fact a single piece of ice and snow, but two. The divide was covered with a thin layer of snow and became rather deep and wide at times in relation to the size of the ice cliff. This presented an obvious avalanche danger when it begins to thaw with warmer weather, but for today it made for a neat finding. There's a reason that foot fell through. Oh, look at this. Look at this. That's sketchy. Sketchy as. Oh! Sketchy as heck. I think this is actually where it begins. Wow. This is one, then it breaks up here. Because this huge, deep divide. Like, that is deep. Holy. Yeah, some part it kind of narrows out, but. This is deep. Look at that. Look at that. This is huge. This whole thing is its own ice sheet. It's crazy. All the way, it's still its own piece. Hugging the shrubs. Starts to recede. Then it kind of just merges here. It has its whole own ice sheet on the cliff. The other discovery was made also by accident. On the edge of the drop-off, I tried to jump kick a chunk of ice down the ledge. Instead of the snow plummeting down, it was in fact stronger and slicker than I had anticipated, and I went plummeting down to the bottom. This was a big scare the first time, but I soon realized that it gave a thrill. In the next episode, Quill of the Coolies, I come face to face with not one but two of the most unforgiving animals of the trees.